In this tutorial, we'll look at how to set up your MIDI controller to work with live. If you don't have a MIDI controller and want to get started with recording, you can skip this tutorial and move to the next video in this series to get you familiar with the audio recording basics in live. Before starting, you may need to install driver software that came with your MIDI controller. Please check the instructions that came with your hardware. Make sure that you download and install the latest drivers for your MIDI controller, and if necessary, restart live or your computer to complete the installation process. To connect your MIDI controller, plug the square side of a USB cable into the controller and the wide side into a USB port on your computer. Some controllers get the power they need just by connecting them to the computer's USB port. But if your controller doesn't, you'll need to connect it to a power source and then turn it on. Now launch live. Most MIDI controllers will begin to work automatically as soon as live detects them, without requiring any configuration on your part. We can check this by playing the controller and seeing the yellow flashing square in the upper right hand corner. This means that your controller is ready to play instruments in live. If your controller doesn't work automatically, or you would like to change some settings, go to Live's preferences from the menu, or use the shortcut Control comma on a PC, or Command comma on a Mac, and click the MIDI Sync tab. You should see one or more input-output entries for your controller in the MIDI port section. To play instruments, make sure that the track switch is set to on in your controller's input port. Live supports many different control surfaces with instant mappings. These natively supported control surfaces automatically adjust Live's built-in devices and reassign themselves when you select a new Live device. If your controller supports instant mappings, this will work automatically as soon as Live detects it. Instant mapping functionality varies depending on the controller. For example, with the MPK25, every time a rack is selected, its macros are instantly mapped to eight knobs. The hand icon in the title bar of a device shows that it's currently controlled by your control surface. If for some reason instant mapping is not working with your MIDI controller, go back to the MIDI Sync tab in Preferences and click on the drop-down menu in the Control Surface column. Choose your control surface and select the MIDI ports it's connected to. Finally, you may own a MIDI controller that may not support instant mappings, or you just may want to set up custom controls for your live set. Once again, let's go to the MIDI Sync tab in Preferences. This time, make sure Remote is enabled for your controller's input port. You can now control almost any parameter in Live with your controller. To do so, click the MIDI switch in the upper right hand corner. Click on the parameter that you would like to control and move the desired knob on your control surface. Finally, click the MIDI switch again. So now you and your MIDI controller should be working comfortably in Ableton Live. 